Hi, I'm Sean Gannon, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about graph functions using vertical and horizontal shifts. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. So we're going to start here first with what is a vertical shift. Okay, so what is a vertical shift? Well, let's look at this image here. We have our function f of x, whatever it is, we don't know what it is. And we're raising the whole function by one unit. It's being shifted vertically on the y-axis by one unit. Notice the two different ways they label the function. Okay, we have f of x and then f of x plus 1, showing that we're shifting that function up one unit, a vertical shift. Okay, so if we have a function, let's say g of x, and we set it's some other function, f of x plus k, all right, we would say that our function f of x is shifted vertically k units, okay? So our function f of x is shifted vertically k units. And if it's a positive k or negative k, it uh, shows which way it's going. So it's going up and positive k, if it's going down with a negative k value. So let's see the definition here. Given a function f of x, a new function g of x equals f of x plus k, where k is a constant is a vertical shift of the function f of x. All the output values change by k units. If k is positive, the graph will shift up. If k is negative, the graph will shift down. Okay, so there we have a little summary of a vertical shift. Let me erase this and we'll get to an example. Okay. So example one, we're adding a constant to a function. To regulate temperature in a green building, airflow vents near the roof open and close throughout the day. Our figure here, which I'll show you in a minute, shows the area of open vents V in square feet throughout the day in hours after midnight T. During the summer, the facility's manager decides to try to better regulate temperature by increasing the amount of open vents by 20 square feet throughout the day and night. Sketch a graph of this new function. Okay, so here we have a function of what they talked about there. Okay, we see the graph there is what well, the x-axis until t equals 8, 8 hours past midnight, so 8 a.m. Then it goes up, v again representing the, uh, the area of open vents. Okay, and then it opens up and then back down again. Okay, for the evening. All right, so we want to we want to shift everything up uh, by 20, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to take that graph. Okay, so we have a graph initially, and we want to increase the amount of open air vents by 20 square feet throughout the day. So we're going to shift that whole graph up by 20 units. So we can see the graph here. Notice the baseline isn't on the x-axis but um, or t-axis, but it's just up by 20 units, but it's still a horizontal line there. Then we still have the same shape of it going up, hitting a peak of 240, and then coming back down again. So that graph has been shifted vertically okay, by 20 units. We can see that. So if our function of that graph was v of t, okay, as it was labeled, we could say s of t is equal to that v of t plus 20, okay? So with that graph there, we can see some table values. So give me a moment to put that out here. And so now we can see from our graph there how it matches here to the table. See the table values of each of uh, value of v of t to then s of t has been added 20 to that. Okay, so we can see that in a table form there, uh, that each one here is added by 20. Okay, all right. So let me erase this here and we'll dive into a uh, shifting a tabular function vertically. Okay, so we're given a function f of x and it's given by our table that we can see there. So our function f of x is in the table, and we want to create a table for the function g of x 
equals f of x minus Oh, f of x there, minus 3. So we want to find that table. So what we have to do is take really every input value there, all right, of f of x, right, and we're going to subtract, or the, for the same input values, we're going to look at f of x, and we're going to subtract 3 from it to get g of x there, okay? So notice here what we have, so I'll go through at least one example. So our table, they tell us that, okay, at f of 2 is equal to 1. So to find g of 2, we take g of 2 equals f of 2 minus 3. At 2 there, so f of 2 is 1, so we put 1 in for f of 2, minus 3, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. And so therefore, g of 2 is going to equal negative 2. Really not too hard there. So if we apply it now to the table, which we can see here. We have our x, our f of x, and then g of x. And then the x value is 2, 4, 6, and 8. The f of x values are still the same as before, 1, 3, 7, 11. But that now is the output, right, of f of x. So now the output of g of x, which is being shifted vertically by negative 3, so down 3. Okay, we subtract 3 to all of the f of x values for each one corresponding. And we get negative 2, 0, 4, and 8. So that's how you shift a table there vertically. Um, yeah, so let's go dive into the next part, which is actually horizontal. All right, so now we're going to talk about horizontal shifts here. One trick that I always remembered growing up, because I always struggled remembering, well, which one's horizontal, which one's vertical. Horizontal, I always thought about how I remembered, was the horizon. kind of goes left to right, so that's the way horizontal is going to be. Vertical, uh, there was a movie that came out, Vertical Limit. I remember it came out. I don't really remember what happened, but I remember the movie. It's about climbers, so that's going to be <laughs> vertical. But that's how I remembered. But the horizontal part is always easy, the horizon. Okay? So what is a horizontal shift? Well, let's look at our graph here. We're given our function f of x, and notice that function is shifted to the left here, a little different than before, or what you would think, and they have f of x plus 2, and the, or x plus 1, sorry, and the 1 is inside of that parentheses there, and it's shifted to the left, okay, so it's almost like an opposite that you would think of, okay? So notice that that's going to be a horizontal shift. The whole graph is just slid to the left one unit. So let's go dive into a um, definition here, horizontal shift. Given a function f, a new function g of x equals f of x minus h, where h is a constant, is a horizontal shift of the function f. If h is positive, the graph will shift to the right, and if h is negative, the graph will shift to the left. Notice here that the equation they mention here has x minus h. Okay, so that's the standard form, is the f of x minus h, and then if h is positive, okay, so it's subtracting a positive number, we shift to the right. If h is negative, the graph will shift to the left because we're subtracting a negative number, which makes it plus a positive there, okay? So be careful. Make sure you have your <laughs> plus and minuses down packed. So let's go dive into an example here of a horizontal shift, okay? All right, returning to our building airflow example from before. Suppose that in autumn, in autumn, the facilities manager decides that the original venting plan starts too late and wants to begin the entire venting program two hours earlier. How can we sketch a graph of the new function? Okay, so we can set v of t to be the original pro uh, problem. So let's say v of t equals the original venting plan. Okay. And f of t equals starting two hours sooner. Okay? So what we're going to do there is that we're actually going to start two hours er, uh, sooner. The plan has to be shifted. So it's the same exact plan, but it's shifted to the left earlier in time by two hours. So notice now on that graph here. We can see the venting plan, which is in blue, the original one, V of T, and F of T shows that it's shifted to the left two hours earlier. 
But here, notice f of t, how do we write that function? Is v of t minus, they said negative 2, so 2 hours earlier, and so what that comes out to be is v of t plus 2, like I had mentioned earlier, okay? The double negative makes it a positive. So here, f of t, if we're going to write that as a function of v of t in a sense, we have v of t plus 2, that plus 2 is on the inside there, and we can see that horizontal shift of that graph. Okay, so now let's go deal with a table function. Give me a moment to erase this, and we'll keep going. All right, so now we're going to shift a tabular function horizontally. Our function f of x is given by the table here. And we want to create a table for the function g of x, which is given as f of x minus 3. How do, we, how do we go about this? We have our table there, right, for x. And we have fx, the output. So 2, 1, 4, 3, 6, 7, 8, 11. The x minus 3 is on the inside, so it's not like it just takes the output and we're changing to it. We're changing, essentially, the input. So here we have f of 2, we know, equals 1. Well, we know g of x is f of x minus 3. So what x value causes this inside to be a 2? which we know is a 1. And that's going to be an x when x is 5. Okay, 5 minus 3 is 2, which gives us that f of 2 is 1. So in our shifting function tabularly, g of 5 is equal to 1. So if we continue that pattern, that operation, we get this table. We have our x, our x minus 3, our f of x minus 3, and g of x. Okay. Notice that first value when um, x is 5, our g of x is 1. Okay. When x is 7, g of x is going to be 3. Our x is 9, g of x is 7. And g x is 11, g of x is 11 as well. Okay. So we can see that also in this graphical form here. Notice we have f of x in blue and g of x equal f of x minus 3. All of those dots, the g of x being orange, are shifted to the right three units there. So it's almost like we have to shift every, we're shifting everything over that horizontal shift, but it's a little different than the vertical shift. It's a little more complicated there. Okay? All right, so let me erase this and we'll go to the next part. So here we want to identify the vertical shift of a toolkit function, okay? So we see this graph here, okay? We see our graph, and we recognize that it almost, it looks like, looks like f of x equals x squared, but it's a little different, okay? So a toolkit function will be f of x equals x squared, but it looks like it's shifted, okay? So we want to find how this function, how we can write this function in terms of, let's say, g of x. Okay, g of x equals what? And that's that graph there. Well, notice it shifted to the right. Okay, it shifted to the right two units here. So g of x is equal to f of, remember shifting here, x minus 2. All right, from our function. Remember before, horizontal shift, we have the subtraction sign, and then the value, it's two units to the right. Okay, well, how do we get g of x now? Well, we know f of x, the toolkit main function, is equal to x squared. So g of x here is equal to, well, if f of x minus 2, we take that x squared value, all right, and instead of x, we write x minus 2 here, okay? And that's really it. We're kind of done. I mean, we can multiply it out, but I think it's pretty good as is. Our g of x here, that function is equal to x minus 2 all squared, and that's what that graph is. It's the f of x function shifted to the right two units. All right? So let me erase this, and we'll keep on going. So here, what we're going to do is interpret horizontal versus vertical shifts. The function g of m gives the number of gallons of gas required to drive m miles. Interpret what g of m plus 10 is and g of, in parentheses, m plus 10 is. So our first one here, g of m 
plus 10. Okay, well GMM again is a function gives us the number of gallons of gas required m miles. Okay, so what can we interpret here? Okay, well we're adding 10 to the output, okay, to the gallons. So we're taking whatever the input m, the miles, all right, so the output's gallons and we add 10 to that. So this is right here, this is the gas required to drive m miles, okay, m miles plus 10 gallons of gas, okay? So this is a vertical shift, right? We're gonna call that a vertical shift. Okay, it's the, the gas required to drive m miles plus 10 more gallons of gas. But what about g of m plus 10? What does that mean? How can that be interpreted? Okay, well, we're adding 10 to the input. So this is the number of gallons of gas required to drive 10 miles more than m miles, okay? So this is what we call a horizontal shift. So this graph would, or this equation would represent the number of gallons of gas required to drive 10 miles more than the miles given, okay? And then again, it's a horizontal shift. All right, so what we're gonna do here, <laughs> again, I'm gonna erase this and we're gonna combine vertical and horizontal shifts. All right, so we're combining vertical and horizontal shifts. We're given f of x equals the square root of x. What does that graph look like? Well, hopefully you remember seeing this as one of the toolkit functions here. And this graph is like a v. Okay, it's an absolute value graph. We have one here, that's gonna be one. There's a point one, one there, et cetera. So it has that V shape. So we're gonna sketch H of X. Okay, so this is F of X here. Let's label it. H of X, which is F of X plus one minus three. Okay, so I'm gonna show the graph with everything here and we'll go through the steps. So again, in blue, we have our Y equals absolute value of X. In orange, we start with the absolute value of x plus one. We're doing that horizontal shift. That plus one makes the graph shift to the left one unit, okay? Then from there, what we wanna do, all right, we're starting with the vertex, makes it easier to see. We shift to the left one unit. Then we apply the x plus one, or the absolute value of x plus one, we apply the minus three, which is a vertical shift now, which brings it down three units. So we see the vertex again moves down three units, and we get our final graph, which is a tealish color of y equals absolute value of x plus one minus three. Okay? All right. So we're gonna go dive into the next example. One moment, let me erase. All right, so we know here that this is a square root function. We have the basic toolkit function. And we're given this graph here. And we wanna say, find out what this transformation is of that graph, okay? So it's, we know it's based off of the square root function. It's basically given to us here. And we wanna find this h of x. What is the h of x equation, okay? So what we wanna do first is we're gonna look at its vertex, or not vertex, sorry, the end point there, that one point. That point is at comma, one, comma, two, okay? So we see that point is really shifted to the right one unit, then up two units. So how can we write this in terms, h of x in terms of f of x, okay? Well, we have f of, if it's moving to the right positive one units, our terms we say x minus that value, which is one, so it's x minus one inside the parentheses. Outside the parentheses, we see that 
our graph is shifted up two units. So again, use that endpoint as a point of reference, two units, and that's a plus two as a vertical shift there. So what would that equation look like here? Well, let's, I was, right, I was about to write F, I'm gonna write H here. So H of X is equal to, well, what's F of X? F of X is the square root. So we have the square root of, keep the inside, X minus one, plus two on the outside, and now we have the equation h of h of x. Notice one thing, the new graph has a domain, all right, so the new graph h of x has a domain of one to infinity, so the domain has changed here, and the range has changed as well, which is from two to positive infinity, okay, of that graph from the basic square root function, okay? Well, I hope this video was informative and you learned something about graph functions using vertical and horizontal shifts. If you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. This helps us make more free math lessons for you and for everyone else. So, as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math. Minute math, minute math, when you need help you use minute math. MinuteMathTutor.com